always be working to be an example and we realize 
that you tell us that we're a light to the world, and we pray that you would help us to be lights that would reflect your goodness and your love. And we pray that you would help uh, us to just think about the ways that we can influence the world for good. Lord, we pray that you would be with um, just all those in attendance tonight, that you would help us to be attentive, and that you would be with us as we leave here and keep us safe. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Matt, where is y'all's clock? Oh, I see that now. Okay. I'm about to say, this can't be a scriptural church. Is there's not a clock somewhere around here. <laughs> Else when they preach till midnight, we know what happens when that happens. All right. What time should I shoot to be finished? <laughs> What's that? Okay. All right. Good to see everyone out tonight. You might want to open your Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let me say before we get in how very thankful I am for the opportunity to be here with all of you. I've heard wonderful things about this congregation over the years. And of course, as Matt said, I've known Matt for a number of years. Um, when I moved to Douglas Hills back a number of years ago, um, his mom and dad were members there and then he and Becky came with the kids and all of our kids were little at that time. In fact, I think, Matt, I've seen a t picture or two uh, of back in the day when the kids were little and you guys would come and visit. But I I've appreciated good work that Matt has done over the years. I know you guys do too. And I'm just thankful to be able to spend a couple of Tuesday nights with you. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 9, Paul wrote this. To Timothy, do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Demas was one of Paul's traveling companions. And Paul didn't travel with just anybody. Remember the story in Acts chapter 15 where he and Barnabas split because Barnabas wanted to bring John Mark along and in Acts chapter 13, John Mark started the journey, and then he left. And Paul didn't let go of that. Paul didn't want John Mark coming back with them. So I say that to help you understand that Paul had very high standards as to who his traveling companions were. And here this man is, who we know very little about, by the name of Demas, who leaves, and not only leaves, but he leaves... Paul tells us, having loved the world. This is a man who preached with Paul, taught with Paul, spent time with Paul, ate with Paul. I mean, can you imagine what that would have been like to associate with Paul? And yet, even with all these being true, he walks away. And he walked away because of the world. Because of the allure of the world. And we don't know what that was. But we know that it was strong enough to pull him away from Paul. And more specifically, pull him away from God. And I bring that up to set the stage for this seriousness of what we're going to discuss. Because I know to a lot of people this does not sound like a topic that needs to be talked about in an assembly of God's people. And I'm highly aware of the fact that I'm going to look like an angry old man as I talk about this lesson tonight. <laughs> and then the lesson next week where we talk about the assault of entertainment. I'm going to sound like that guy, I don't like, I don't like, it's bad, you shouldn't do it. I don't want to be that person. But I do 
want to be the person who opens up the Word of God with you and presents some cases that you need to be concerned. As Christians, as the brother who prayed said, as we talk about the issue of social media tonight, or we talk about next week entertainment, or the week after that, modern education, all of these have their good areas. So this isn't going to be a bashing, but there are a lot of problems with all of these areas too. And where are we, guys? We're in the world. We're navigating through this world just like Demas was. We're fooling ourselves if we don't think we can't be influenced negatively by social media, if we think that we can't be influenced negatively by entertainment or modern education systems. We're like Demas thinking he will never fall away we got to be careful. So let's talk about that this evening for a few minutes. In 1900 in Galveston, Texas, a hurricane hit. And this was before they named hurricanes. 12,000 people, it is believed, were killed in that hurricane. In our more recent times, many of you will remember 2005, late August, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. It is estimated that it caused 100 to 140 billion dollars in property damage and some 1400 people lost their lives. That's a storm. But I do want to talk tonight about a storm that's coming on that is far more dangerous than any hurricane. It's not a localized storm that will only hit the Dayton area or Louisville area. It is a worldwide storm. And it has come on really, really quickly. And that is the storm of social media. Social media is attributed to have started in 1997 with a website called Six Degrees. I've never heard of that before until I started researching this. I was aware of some of the subsequent websites that came up of social media. MySpace, that was a big thing to talk about there in the early 2000s. And since then, we just have one right after another. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Social media is all over the place. And everybody is using social media. You may say, well, I don't, but I'll I'll guarantee you there are people that you know and family members that do. 4.9 billion people around the world log on to social media sites every day. That number is expected to jump to 5.8 billion by 2027. Globally, get this one, globally, the average person has eight social media accounts. That's a lot. 84% of those ages 18 to 29 use social media every day. That's probably not very surprising. 81% of people 30 to 49 actively use social media every day. That may not be very surprising. 73% of those 50 to 64, my age range, use social media every day. And some of you older than that are going like, I can't believe someone uses that. Of those 65 and older, 45% use social media. A lot of people use social media. And if I need to step back a little bit more just to help you out, if you're wondering, what is social media? (laughs) Social media is websites where people can log on and start connecting to other people. A lot of people are on social media. And it is having profound effects upon us as a people and a lot of times us as Christians. This storm is here. What do we do with it? Well, I want you to realize, first of all, this is the good part, the happy part of the sermon. As with any storm, there are benefits. Storm comes along, and the old timers they start saying, like, got a lot of rain last night. <laughs> Looked out on the uh, on my deck and it said we got two inches of rain. And they talk about that and call each other. Well, that's a benefit, right? And the earth is replenished. There's good that comes even from a hurricane. Well, with this storm, there is some good that comes with it. First of all, social media promises 
and provides the possibility of greater connectivity of people. All right? How many of you who are on social media have reconnected with people that you knew as kids? It's okay to raise your hand. Okay? Pretty good number. There's some that probably are going, I'm not going to raise my hand, but you still did. Uh, we connect sometimes with people we haven't seen in years. Social media provides a way for grandparents to see pictures of their grandchildren at a softball game, a piano recital. It's a way for people who sometimes worship with each other, but they haven't seen each other in years to reconnect. And that's a wonderful thing. It's wonderful. Social media also provides a way for us to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. When someone gets married, you know what you do? Today, you post pictures on Facebook, on Instagram. That's what you do. If you go on vacation, you post pictures, and it provides a way for people to connect with you while you're on your vacation and say, hey, uh, it looks like you had a great time. Good for you. I'm so happy for you guys. And you hear from friends who are genuinely rejoicing with you. A grandchild is born. Here's a picture of my grandchild. Good for you. I'm so happy for you. But also, when loved ones pass away, about five years ago, my mother passed away, and I heard from people that I had not heard from in years who reached out when they heard and said, Hey, Mark, we are so sorry to hear about your loss. That meant a lot. And I appreciated social media at that point. And social media provides a tool today to share the word of God literally around the world. I want you to realize for the first time in human history, we have the ability through social media to connect with people in real time anywhere in the world. About two months ago, my, my wife and I were in the Philippines on the other side of the world. I still contact those men, and sometimes we do it through Facebook. And we can have a conversation with each other. He's halfway around the world. And through efforts like you have here, live streaming, people in the, the most remotest parts of the world can see congregations together with one another, see how biblical communities interact with one another as they worship, and hear the word of God. I am 100% convinced that if the Apostle Paul were alive today, he would have social media accounts. Paul would use that because Paul was all about sharing the gospel. And if Paul saw that this is a way to reach people all around the world, Paul would have had Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, just to get the word of God out. Paul would have been posting on this side and this side. He would have been writing some kind of verse they'd written down. This is something everyone needs to hear because Paul was all about sharing the gospel. Guys, if you're about sharing the gospel, you need to be on social media. Because social media provides a way for you to interact with your friends and on your page or wherever to start putting Bible verses, to share sermon links that are taking place here so that your friends and your loved ones can see what's really important to you. Social media provides a way for you to, as Jesus said, let your light shine. Not just in this area, which is important, but in a larger area of people that you don't see all the time, but you're connected with them. Okay? So social media has a lot of wonderful benefits. And it's a powerful tool for people to connect with each other in a real-time way and share the Word of God and let people know what's really important to them. And so I would encourage you, if you have shied away from social media, look, you don't have to go on it, but if you shied away because you've heard bad stories about it, I would encourage you, there are good things that you can do with it. And there are powerful things that you can do. There are people that you can connect with, with the gospel, that you may never connect with here. So don't write it off. Having said that, while there is rain that replenishes the earth with a storm... There's a lot of wind, and there's a lot of destruction that goes with it. 
25 years ago, social media started. And in 25 years, social scientists have learned a lot of things that social media is doing that 25 years ago we didn't know about. Things that are challenging and dangerous. And Christians, you need to be aware. Not just young Christians. All of us need to be aware of. For one thing, social media promises has happiness. But what we are seeing is it actually oftentimes delivers a lot of sadness. From the Journal, from the journal of the American Medical Association, spending more than three hours on social media per day puts adolescents at a higher risk for mental health problems. From Psychology Today, in fact... The latest studies show that the rampant and ever-pervasive nature of social media is actually making many of us insecure and anxious. NBC News, social media is driving teen mental health to a crisis. That's the Surgeon General of the United States of America. Now why is that? Why is social media identified as a driver of anxiety and sadness in our culture? Well, what type of pictures do people post? I mean, they put a, a picture of themselves right, out of the, after, right after they get out of bread, uh, bed in the morning. You know, they're in the pajamas, their hair, if they have hair, it's like all over the place. No. We post pictures of ourselves together in front of the Grand Canyon, and we're all combed up, and we look nice. And there's some people, they just, you know, they just got their hair done or they just got their fingernails done. They have a nice dress on and they're out for their anniversary. Happy anniversary to us, 31 years or whatever. And people see them and they're going like, you know, I can barely button my shirt. And, and you've got it all together. And a lot of our young people, what's driving it with a lot of young people is the people that they are seeing are people who are social media influencers have a lot of money, a lot of money to make sure they look really nice and they have surgery after surgery and they alter their body. And people are looking at that and they're going, I can't compete with that. Those of you who are older, look, I mean, I gave up a long time ago. I knew this is all I got. Okay? But there are a lot of younger people who are struggling with self-image and they're trying to formulate who they are, and they haven't gotten to the point where they are comfortable with being who they are, and all they see are these images of people whose life is perfect, at least it seems that way. Their bodies are perfect, and that's driven a lot of people to be concerned. Child suicide rates increased by up to 150% over the last number of years in self-harm by girls ages 10 to 14, has nearly tripled. So much so that this statistic site said these patterns point to social media. Social media also promises to connect people one to another. It oftentimes disconnects. Why? Well, for the previous point. If you're looking perfect and your life looks perfect and mine doesn't, well, I'm not going to want to hang out with you. So all these people who are supposed to be coming together with one another actually begin to move farther and farther away from each other because social media drives them apart. Another psychology website, studies suggest that using Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and similar social media apps to keep in touch with friends and forge online connections can add vitality and communion to your life. That's the positive. It can do it. It can bring people together. But... If you're spending hours every day using social media mainly as a substitute for real connection, your feelings of loneliness and inadequacy will likely worsen. It seems like sometimes the place that social media is connecting people is with predators and cyberbullies. And cyberbullying today is a growing problem. Pew Research discovered that 59% of U.S. teens have experienced some form of online harassment or cyberbullying. It's there. Social media 
also promises to enrich our lives. What it's end up doing is stealing from us. And the number one thing it steals from us? Time. One website said this, based on research, all told, over a lifetime, the average person will spend five years and four months on social media. Now just stop for a minute and let that sink in. Over the course of a lifetime, the average person will spend five years on social media. More time than is typically spent eating and drinking, but slightly less than the average time people spend watching TV. That's next week's lesson. That's a lot of time. Five years of our lives. And it happens quickly. I'll confess a little bit right now. Um, I have a Facebook account. I also have, under my wife's name, an uh, Instagram at- a- account. And I use that mainly to keep up with my girls because they're on Instagram more. And on Instagram, people will share like TikTok videos. And you know one of the things I end up doing sometimes? I'll, I'm a sucker for anything with a dog in it. And so I'll click on the dog and I'll watch the video. And it's maybe 20 seconds long. Scroll and hit the next one. 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 And before you know it, I've been doing that for 20 minutes. Now, there's nothing wicked about it. It's not evil. It's dogs, okay? Dogs barking, doing tricks. They're cute. But it's 20 minutes of my time. Now, I justify that in my head by saying, I don't do it except before I go to bed. But that's still 20 minutes of my time. A couple years ago, a new word came into our vocabulary. Binging. Binge watching. How many of you know what binge watching is? Come on, raise your hands. Okay, binge watching, if you don't know, is when you go on to like Netflix or Amazon and you watch a TV show and another one and another one, one episode after another, and then like five or six hours have passed by. Okay. So all this time begins to disappear from our life, and the Apostle Paul warned, we need to be careful with our time. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but wise, making the best use of our time. Why? We're the children of God. And it's not that we can't go on social media, but it is to say we have more higher things that we give our attention to. And we've got to set our mind on higher things, not things in this world. And social media provides a way to be noticed and sometimes idolized. Now, I'm going to say this very carefully because um, it's, it's hard to judge people's hearts. And I've learned years ago that you can't do that. But I will tell you, I think one of the closest ways we can come to judging someone's heart is by looking at their social media accounts over a long period of time. Because what you see in some people over a long period of time is this. One picture after another of themselves. And I'm not talking about going to the Grand Canyon or going to New York. I'm not talking about taking a picture with family members. I'm talking about I'm in the gym. You know, start doing all you know that stuff. Or, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm at this restaurant. You know, and it's it's like you you start thinking after a while because it's like everybody look everybody takes selfies to some degree. There's nothing wrong with that. I want to clear, make sure you understand that. There's nothing wrong with taking a selfie. But when your social media is one picture after another of yourself, you need to start recognizing not only are you telling people something about you, but you're missing that lesson. Narcissism is alive and well on the internet. Psychology today again, of course, almost everyone takes selfies of some sort. So selfies don't necessarily indicate narcissistic traits. But for a narcissist, in particular, selfies are all about themselves and their ego. They take more selfies than any other type of photo. Understand what I'm saying here. I'm not saying it's wrong to take a selfie. 
I'm not saying it's wrong to post a selfie on social media. But I think maybe sometimes it would be good for us to scroll back to our social media and go back for like a couple of months and just see how often we continually want to put ourselves out there for other people. And I'll tell you another way in which people use social media to gain attention for themselves is talking about all their problems. Because they can gain attention that way too. So social media provides this platform for people to promote themselves. And then social media pr promises to unite us. It really divides us. Social media, as we said earlier, is this beautiful place where people can come together around the world. And yet sometimes people say the rudest things to one another on social media. You know why? Because I'm not right in front of you. I'm 100 miles away, 5 miles away, I'm sitting behind my keyboard, and people say things to one another. And beloved, a lot of times as Christians, and we air our dirty laundry for all the world to see, because we have a platform, and because I can say whatever I want to say, and we don't recognize that we're hurting the cause of Christ, because when people know that you're a Christian, and they know I'm a Christian, and we're arguing on social media with one another, guess who doesn't want to become a Christian? We're supposed to be different. And I'll just mention COVID. Boy, COVID was a nasty period of time for the church. At least that was my observation with brethren across the country sometimes. And the way they acted toward one another and spoke toward one another. So social media does all of these things and it's supposed to fix so many problems. And social scientists are recognizing it's creating a lot of problems. So ultimately the big question is what can we do? What are we supposed to do? Well, we can't get rid of it. I know there are a lot of people who go, let's just shut it all down. Shy of a worldwide cataclysmic event, <laughs> the, so the social media and the internet is not going anywhere, guys. And if you think that humanity is going to join together and shut it down, you're living in la-la land. It's not going anywhere. It is here to stay. So we can't shut it down. Second thing we can't do is we can't act like it's not there. We need to admit that there's a danger. Have you ever seen, um, like there's a hurricane barreling down on Florida, and they go to the town that's like in the, like the, the crosshairs, Florida, and, and, and they're talking to people, and people are going like, I'm just going to ride it out. You're going, no, you're going to die. <laughs> you cannot ride this thing out. You know? Well, there are some people like, well, you know, social media is not that big of a deal, and you know, you're living in La La Land. Grandparents, if you don't think this is affecting your grandkids or your kids, you're living in la-la land. And may I respectfully say to parents, if you're thinking, oh, my son or my daughter would never have a problem with this, you're living in la-la land. This is here. And I, your kid may be just wonderful and perfect, but they've got friends who aren't wonderful and perfect. And the influence is going to come in here. Just like Demas. I'm not saying they're going to fall away. Hopefully they won't. But I'm saying that those influences are there. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 8 says, The prudent sees danger and hides himself. He's aware of the danger. That's what I'm calling on us to think about right now. As we're living in this turbulent world, let's be aware of this danger. Now, what are some really proactive things we can do? First thing you've got to do, and this is going to be the foundation of the next several lessons. We've got to make sure we turn to God first and foremost. We've got to turn to God. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Parents, the best thing you can do to guard your children in this era of social media, is make sure your relationship with the Lord is solid 
and make sure that you are finding real joy in your relationship to the Lord. Make sure that you enjoy worshiping the Lord at home with your friends, with the church family. Make sure you don't talk about the leaders of this church. Don't talk about the elders if you're mad at a decision that they made in front of your kids. Don't talk about the preachers in front of the kids. Don't talk about your brothers or sisters in front of the kids. When we start doing that, we are planting seeds of discontentment within them and social media is there to take them to another place. We need to make sure we are turning to the Lord and trusting in the Lord. And what I find interesting as I start thinking then about what social media has promised us, what's interesting is the Lord really provides all the things that social media has said it would provide and failed. Social media says, we'll give you peace. It hasn't, but God does. In Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Jesus, John chapter 14, verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. You want peace? Want real joy in your life? It's God. You want to be connected to other people? God. Do you know the original social network that God gave? You're it. The church. That, that, that's the social network that God gave us. Real people that you're sitting next to. Real people that you're worshiping with. Real people that you're connected to. Real people who like you. Who will pat you on the back and encourage you. Maybe. Maybe sometimes get on to you. But they love you. Real people that you can associate with. This is what God gave us. If you want to connect with other human beings and you need a place to call home. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 11, Finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of peace will be with you. You want purpose? You want life? God gives life. John 10, verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came, Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. God wants you to have life. God wants you to have a purpose in your life. So many people are looking for purpose and they're turning to social media. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God wants you to have a purpose in your life. And he gives you one, and God notices you. So many people turn to social media because they feel like no one's aware of me. And so then they do all the posing so people can say hello and notice them. Listen, God notices you. You may be overlooked by all the kids at school. You're not overlooked by God. You may feel all alone at times, as if no one sees you and no one cares. God sees you. And God cares. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, what we need to be doing is spending more time praying than posting, more time reading than watching, and more time studying than scrolling. I'm not saying there's not a place for the other things, but we need to put a priority on our relationship with God. And when we do that, that's going to demand that we discipline ourselves. I know we're not encouraged to discipline ourselves. I ate supper with the Spargos tonight and had a great meal. And then the lady comes out and she wants to sell desserts. You know, it's like more, more, more. And that's what we want, right, as Americans. We want more, bigger, larger. But maybe sometimes bigger and larger isn't really best for us. And maybe sometimes the fastest internet service isn't the best for us. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11 says, A fool gives full bent to his spirit, does whatever he wants to do, but a wise man quietly holds it back. 
Chapter 25, verse 28, a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. God calls upon us to be people who are disciplining ourselves. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, if you will, for a moment, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. This will probably pop up in the next several lessons as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. Paul said, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. You know what that is saying? It's saying that there are some things that are clearly wrong. Adultery, murder, stealing. There are other things that aren't clearly wrong. But they may not help you go to heaven. And so if you find yourself spending a lot of time on social media and you're not studying the Word of God, maybe you need to start reining yourself in. I can't say you can't use social media. It'd be nice to say just, you just can't do all the things that are just not good judgments. But the Bible doesn't work like that. And you're going to have to study and you're going to have to say, look, here is the problem I have here. And maybe sometimes parents are going to have to step in and be the bad guys. Here are some different websites and services that you can use to monitor your husband or your wife or your children's internet activities. I know some of your parents are going like, well, we don't need that. I'm just saying it's there. Maybe we need to have something like that on our cell phone and on our computer to keep us from looking at things we don't need to be looking at. Maybe we, we need to have something like that so someone that we're accountable to can say, look, I just noticed that you were on the internet for five hours the other day. Is that really helpful? So discipline yourself. And number five, be humble. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble, there is reason, wisdom. And Proverbs 27, verse 2, what a, what a timely passage for social media. Let another praise you, and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. Don't get on social media bragging about something. I know grandkids, okay, you can get away with that one. But not yourself. It doesn't look good. You're a sinner, saved by grace. You may be better put together than some people, at least artificially, but you're just like everybody else. Don't go on social media trying to cause envy. Be humble. Let me give you one last one and we'll close up. Build relationships with real people. And in particular, your family. Two types of family here, your spiritual family and your physical family. One of the things social scientists have discovered is a lot of times young people in particular go rushing to social media because their parents are too busy to spend time with them. And sometimes the parents are on social media. So you have a lot of people sitting around a table together, but no one's paying attention to one another because they've all got the phone out. Have all of you seen that commercial? It's out a couple of years ago. The guy and the girl, they're on a date and they're sitting at a table and they're both looking at their phones and she's typing away and she hits a button and then he says, did you just break up with me? <laughs> they're just two feet away from each other. Fathers and mothers, take your kids out for coffee. Take your kids out for breakfast. Take your kids out for lunch. Take your kids out for supper. Talk to them. Try to just be interested in their life. And maybe, maybe, they won't find quite the same appeal to go rush into social media. I'm not saying it won't be there, but maybe it won't be quite the same. Husbands and wives, rather than scrolling over and over again mindlessly through social media, go out on dates with each other and talk to each other. Spend time with people. Spend time with your brothers and sisters. 
when there are events that go on here within the congregation, I know social events, I know that it's a church, churches don't organize these things, but, but they're important, and we all know they are. So when someone has a get-together at their house, go. Spend time with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And then maybe take some pictures and post them on social media. That's okay. But spend time with real people that you love. Proverbs 17, verse 17, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born in adversity. Proverbs 18, verse 24, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. You need that person. So I'll tell you this, your friend in Ripsaw, Egypt, when you're in the hospital, they're probably not going to be in the hospital with you. They may console you by texting you, and that's fine. These people that you have next to you right now, they're the ones who are going to be in the hospital with you. They're the ones coming to see you. They're the, ty- the ones who see you when you come in, and you just look off. And a brother or sister comes and puts their arm around you and says, Hey, is everything okay? Kind of looks like you're having a bad day. I love you. Sometimes that's all we need. And God in his wisdom, he provided that. So what can we do as Christians trying to navigate through this digital storm that we have going on around us? Realize you can't get rid of it. Recognize there is a danger out there. Turn to God. Discipline yourself. Be humble. Build relationships with real people. I want to close with this. This is another commercial that you still see from time to time. It's, it's an insurance commercial. And it's a spoof on horror movies. You know the one I'm talking about now? Where the people are running and they're going like, oh, you know, we got to run for the bad guy. Hey, there's this spooky old house up there. Let's go run in the attic. And they're going, oh, no, we can't do that. Let's go to the basement. No. And someone goes, let's go to that tool shed. And, you know, there are chainsaws and axes hanging down there. And the announcer says, when you're in a horror movie, you make poor decisions. That's what you do. You and I are living in a world that has a social media storm hitting in. Don't make poor decisions. Don't make poor decisions. Turn to God and make wise decisions. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We lift you up as our creator, as the one who loves us more than we can ever imagine. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the principles of your word which guide us in a a situation that was just in the first century and in biblical times was unforeseen by men. And yet you and your wisdom give us principles that are timeless. It's challenging. All of us can benefit greatly from social media and we are thankful for the positives But all of us preachers, elders, all of us, young people, middle-aged people, all of us can get sucked in in a bad way. So give us wisdom. Help us to turn to your word. Bless every person here in whatever their, their social media consumption is. May we think about our relationship with you first and foremost, and may that relationship guide everything that we do. When we find that we're having a problem putting social media down, when we find that we are uh, getting a, a, a rush because of the likes and the attention that we're getting, help us, dear Father, to recenter ourselves on you. We don't want to be like Demas. We don't want to wander away. We don't want to give up the future world for this present world. We don't want to be lost. We don't want to miss all the glories of heaven that you have waiting for us. So we pray that we'll embrace the teachings of your word and strive to use social media, if we do, in an appropriate way to bring glory and honor to you. We love you. Thank you for all that you do for us. Cleanse us through your son, Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray. And Amen. Thank you very much for listening so well tonight.
Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign. 